Welcome back, guys. This is the SGPN Fantasy Football Podcast on the Sports Gambling Podcast Network presented to you by WinBet. WinBet is now live in Arizona, Colorado, Indiana, Louisiana, Michigan, New Jersey, New York, Tennessee, and Virginia. From boost the same game parlays to live in-game odds, WinBet has what you need to win. If you sign up today, you bet $100, you're going to get $100 back at sportsgamblingpodcast.com. That's just WinBet. That's sportsgamblingpodcast.com. That's just W-Y-N-N-B-E-T. State restrictions apply. We're also brought to you by the NASCAR Gambling Podcast. Start your engines today with Rod and Cody. Get your get ready to gamble on the Daytona 500 this Sunday. Welcome back. We are doing our rookie series, and today we're going to talk about Mr. Cedric Tillman. Reminders, please subscribe and check that notification box. You can get our, our future episodes. Brad, let's let's start the Cedric Tillman episode because I'm excited. Yeah, I, you know, I, I'm already questioning myself. The more we talk about him, the more we watch. We got on here, likely he's a third-round pick, and that may be a little low for Cedric Tillman, wide receiver for the Tennessee Volunteers, coming in at six foot three, 215 pounds. This dude is fearless. He's a possession guy. He's a big guy. He's a physical guy, but he has that big playability also that you love to be combined with the size and the frame that he's got. His 2021 season start was absolutely stellar. If you go back and you look from the seventh game on up against Alabama, he ended the season in those last five games with 28 catches, 556 yards, and seven touchdowns through the end of the season. Now, this year, it's a little bit different tale, right? We saw 37 catches, 417 yards, and only three touchdowns. But when he had this nagging ankle injury, Hendon Hooker goes down. When Tillman came back, he never really looked the same because it was bothering him. So it was a little bit of a down year for him. But I really think it had a little bit more to do with the ankle injury itself. Look, we talked about his physicality. This dude has a stiff arm that I've I've not seen from a lot of people, right? He goes through the middle. He doesn't shy away from his contact. The dude just wants to put his hand on other people's faces. I'm imagining like a 12-inch hand or something just mammothing these guys down on the ground. It's absolutely phenomenal to watch the physicality he's got, and I just feel like I'm saying the same word over and over again because that's what you see. So, Dave, give us some other pros and cons other than his physicality. Yeah, I mean, obviously that's the big one. Um, he's 6'3", 215, and so what I think is going to happen in this draft, you have a lot of people that are going – like a lot of these receivers – are smaller receivers and they are slot receivers or, you know, slot guys that are projected that they can play outside. And so if you're shopping for that kind of receiver, there's a whole lot to shop for and it might drop the value down of some of those guys. If they're tiered together, there's not a lot of these guys that are six, three, two, 15 and Cedric Tillman is one of them. And he's one of the best receivers in this class at that size. So if you are shopping for a 6'2", 215 pound receiver, 6'3", 215 pound receiver, there's not much to pick from. And so Cedric Tillman is definitely going to be one of those guys that I think goes a little higher than people are projecting. And you talked about it. I mean, he started the season off hot, six catches for 68 yards, nine catches for 162 yards and a touchdown against Pitt. Then he hurt his ankle week three, only had two catches, 16 yards, hurt the ankle, ended up going for surgery, had surgery on that ankle. He came back, first game back, four catches, 22 yards. Then he had seven receptions, 68 yards against Georgia. Then he finished the season off with nine receptions, 81 yards with two touchdowns, and that was with the backup quarterback there in Tennessee. Um, this, this guy is, like you said, he is fearless going across the middle. He is your prototypical possession receiver. I've seen a lot of Robert Woods comps, and I really do like that, but he's, he's bigger than Robert Woods is. He is just, you, you see a, a, just a cloud of dust and a bunch of players on the ground after this guy catches the ball because he's just, people are people can't catch him. And they, cannot, they cannot tackle this guy. Not that they can't catch him. He's not the fast guy in the world, but they can't tackle him. You usually see two or three guys to bring this guy down. And 
I love the physical physicality when you see that because you're looking at someone that um, you know almost Debo Samuel type when he gets the ball in his hand and he can take those slants and just take it to the house. And uh, like you said earlier with the stiff arm, he loves contact and he just goes and slap people across the side of the head like George Pickens. Um, he just he likes to do that stuff. And it's fun to see. You don't see a lot of receivers that you say like that's a dude. That's like that's that's someone is a you know he's a dog, um, and he's one of those guys. And I just love that. And if you're looking for someone, it's third down, third and six, third and seven. And you need eight yards. He's someone that you're gonna. He's not gonna be afraid to go across the middle and get it. Or in those goal line situations where you run a slant across the middle, you know the safety's gonna tee off on you, and you have no problem just goes up and gets it. And then his ball tracking, like he's one of the best in the class. Of this, he always helps the quarterback out. He really does like the quarterback can throw balls a little bit off. It's fine. So someone's going to figure it out. He's, he's very, um, you know, very good with his hands. I'm um, kind of that late hand hand movement, but just the ball tracking itself, whether it's an over the shoulder sideline route or whether he's going deep and the big plays, like I said, he can, he really does break a lot of tackles. And so we take a short, you know, short five, seven yard catch and take it to the house. Um, his cons didn't face, you know, he, he faced a lot of zone coverage. Didn't, you know, he didn't really do as well. Like he needs to develop more as a route runner. And when it came down to the zone coverage, learning where to find the holes in the zone, learning how to do some of those things. He's not the most athletic guy in the field. You're not going to see him blow the combine out of the waters He's probably just going to blend in with the rest of the group because his numbers are not going to pop up off the page and, and separation. He's not the biggest separator in this class. One of the reasons he has such a high contested rate is because he's not the best separator in this class. And that will always be a concern for, for a lot of these players. You, you've seen um, Nikhil Harry's, you know, the, the worst case scenario kind of a deal where this guy makes a whole bunch of highlight catches in college he can't separate in the pros. He ends up having to, you know, essentially move to a tight end position. So I don't think that's the case with Cedric Tillman. Uh, Cedric Tillman, again, is, you know, I think the ankle injury slowed him down at the end of the year, but he still was there. You know, he still was was balling out against teams like Georgia and Alabama and, and South Carolina. So um, that's my spiel on Cedric Tillman. I think he goes in the second round, late second round, and I hope he goes to my New York Giants. Yeah, it's interesting because you talk about supply and demand, right? Well, how many receivers of these top, this top, we'll say top 10, are even over 200 pounds? I think there's three in my head. Quentin Johnston, Rasheed Rice, and Cedric Toon. Like, that's it? Yeah. You know, everybody else is like 170, 180 pounds. You know, everybody's hyping up Zay Flowers. The dude's like 5'9", 180 pounds, right? You got a lot of undersized guys. That kind of is where the NFL is going. But, hey, supply and demand may push him up even higher than the late second round. You know what I mean? So, Yeah, Keishon Butte is right around 200 pounds. Um, but other than that, you're you're really looking at, you know, these four guys. Yep. Yeah, I think he's right now, ESPN says Boutte is 195. So likely he'll come in at 200 at the combine. But yeah. Yeah. Cool. Well, hey, thanks for checking out the Summit episode. Make sure you like, subscribe, and again, hit that notification button. As always, good luck. Cheers.